An anatomical example of what you'll find in the body of a class two lever system is standing on your tiptoes, which is a basic way of saying plantar flexion. And so we'll talk about that here in just a moment. So here's our basic class two lever system. We have our fulcrum on one end, the load in the middle, and then the applied effort all the way on the other end. Now here's our anatomical example of plantar flexion. So our fulcrum is gonna be down here on the toes. The resistance, which is in the middle, is gonna be the weight of the person going through their shin and lower leg bones onto the ankle joint. And then the applied force is going to be the force generated when the calf muscles contract. And so one way to look at this is that a class two lever system, again, is a power system. And it's a lot easier to stand on your tiptoes than it is if you were to be standing on your hands and try to stand up on your fingers. And it has to do with how the system on that joint, the lever system is orientated. And so with a class two lever system, it's much easier to move a weight than say our next one. The last lever system is a class three lever system. And so for this one, our fulcrum again is gonna be on one end. And this time at the opposite end, we're gonna have our load or resistance or weight. And then in the middle, is where we'll have our applied force. And so this time, the applied force is in the middle, so the force arm is gonna be much shorter. Whereas the load arm, which is the entire thing, is gonna be much larger this time. So, Let's get our direction down. So again, load, weight, gonna be going down. And in order to overcome this, again, how this is set up, our force has to go upward. And that will cause the entire system to also move up. Now, this is a range of motion lever. And so these are gonna have lots of distance they're able to move. And you can see if we were to have this go from all the way down here, it could go all the way almost parallel there. So it's able to move a great distance, but it's not as strong. And you actually have to put in more force than what the load weighs in order to overcome its weight, just how everything's set up. So a real world example of this is actually a shovel. So going back to our 50 pounds of dirt, it's much easier to use that class two lever system, the wheelbarrow to pick it up than if we had a shovel. So with the shovel, how it's going to work is that the fulcrum is going to be your back arm as it's able to move it however it needs to. On the opposite end is where the dirt goes and the, the actual shovel itself. And then in between is the arm that's actually going to lift the shovel up. And so again, class three levers are not anywhere close to as powerful as a class two lever system is. Now an anatomical example of this is gonna be the opposite of our triceps, which is the biceps brachii. And their action is flexion of the forearm. And if you recall flexion, it's gonna be narrowing of a joint angle, making it smaller. And so it makes the elbow joint smaller, causes it to close up when the biceps flex. And this is actually a class three lever system, but in reality, most of the joints in your body are class three levers. Um, it's the most common lever system that you'll find in the body. So as we take a look, here's our fulcrum. Force is in the middle this time, and then the load is on the opposite side. So here's our biceps brachii, again, causing flexion of the forearm. We have the fulcrum, which is the elbow. So it's able to move the force is in between, actually inserts in the middle right here on one of the forearm bones. Then the resistance or the load of the force is the weight of the hand or say a dumbbell doing curls. And that will complete chapter two.